participants this time around. And we have a great training to you uh, provided by James Finlinson, president and founder of One Click App. Um, let me just quickly go through go through the basics. <clears throat> and, and then uh, James is going to take it away and dive into the meat and potatoes of it all. Uh, today's presenters is James Finlinson, founder and president, entrepreneur and passionate software developer, who was the, who was the, uh, a devoted employee of Chick-fil-A for over three years and decided to create solutions for them, for the challenges that they were having. I'm a, a Mike Alvarez, founder and CEO, and I worked for eBay, Omniture, MyFamily.com, Ancestry.com, and other tech giants. And um, and, I, and I've grown several tech companies in the past. Uh, our progress to date, about 14 months ago, there was one store with 150 team members that are being served. Now we're nearing closer to 100 stores and serving 13,000 Chick-fil-A team members. These team members are responsible for generating three, uh, three quarters of a billion dollars in food sales for Chick-fil-A. Just a couple of testimonials. Uh, we are, uh, one is, why are we spending so much time manually copying names from hot schedules when we should be focusing on growing our business? We run a $9 million Chick-fil-A on One Click App. We're ready to get into the digital age. One Click App was a game changer for us at Hinesville, Georgia. It's now a must have in my new Plaza Little Obispo, California store. These are just some of the testimonials that we've received and we've received many, but these are some of the ones that I picked. Today's topic is how to track training with one simple system. Uh, and the agenda is, uh, we're just gonna cover the basics to begin with for anybody who's new for a few minutes and then we're gonna dive deep into the system. Software options for capturing training notes, performance ratings and using the data to create better game plans, new features and then FAQs. Just a quick, just to, uh, just for anybody who's new, just to let you know, if you decide to get started with us, we start for as little as $5 a day to take your headaches away from managing your team members. Um, and uh, our focus is 100% on Chick-fil-A. Think of us as becoming your custom software development company. You tell us what you need and we're gonna add it to our development list. Uh, there's no other company that's doing that or, or can say that. And to get started with a two week trial, if you'd like to get started, just email sales at oneclickapp.com or go to oneclickapp.com and you'll see a button there that, that'll help you do that. So with that intro, I will let uh, James take over and he's got a presentation as well and uh, jump into things and I'll be monitoring monitoring some of the questions. Feel free to raise your hand and send some questions and we will go from there. Awesome, thank you, Mike. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, take it away from you now. Um, I do have a slideshow, but the slideshow is not the main thing I came to show off today. So um, I'm gonna be hopping back and forth between the slideshow and then also the actual software, you know, actually doing its job. I wanted to point out that today, I chose to wear my Chick-fil-A t-shirt. Um, this is one, you can't see it on the back, but. This is one that I got when I was working um, at Chick-fil-A for the solar eclipse in 2017. And so there was a total solar eclipse. It passed through my town in, in Idaho Falls, Idaho. And um, I was the cow mascot earlier in the day. And then they, they pulled me off the street and I got to be on the roof of my Chick-fil-A building when it all went dark and the, like, the street lights turned on and it was pretty fun for me. Um, so that was fun, I love Chick-fil-A. Um, I also wanted to start today with a story um, especially because the focus is, is all about training. Um, I remember when I was, when I was being trained at Chick-fil-A, I started, I was a, I was a noob. Let me tell you that I, I was a noob. Um, and I remember when I was in dining room and they were about to train me and teach me front counter. And I was so excited. And they said, okay, we're going to, we're going to teach you front counter. And they had me watch some videos and, um, I had done my, it was called E-Train before that. Now it's changed to Pathways but I had done my E-Train videos ahead of time. And they said, okay, now we're, we're gonna like work with you to do this. And so a, a trainer helped me and I was on the register and they were teaching me the things and showing me all the buttons and helping me ask the questions and trying to coach me to like do the drinks. And 
I remember I loved it and I was really excited for the opportunity. And also I was really bad at it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, the first day when they first trained me on front counter, um, they gave me my speed of service report and they printed it off off the, reg the POS register. And my average speed of service for the night was a minute and 37 seconds. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. That is definitely not the 45 seconds that E-Train tells me I should be having pathways now. <laughs> Anyway, that that's where I was, and I was my first day on register. And a couple of days later, they put me on again with another hour on my next shift or something. Um, I was on the register again with another trainer, and they were again coaching me and teaching me. And at some point, they let me go on my own. And just to illustrate how nerdy of a person I am, um, as I was learning front counter, um, I would go and after every shift, they had given me these speed of service reports the first time. And after every shift, I'd go up to my shift leader and say, hey, I was unregistered today. I want to know how I was doing. Can you print off my speed of service report so I can look at it? And so I'd do that and ask that question every shift. And I'd ask the shift leader. And at some point, they're like, you know what, James, <laughs> I'm tired of printing off your speed of service reports. I'm just going to show you how to do it yourself. And so they showed me how to print off my speed of service reports. And I would do that. And after every shift I worked on register, I would print off my speed of service report. And then I would go and I would open up a spreadsheet and I typed in all the data into a spreadsheet and I analyzed it and I built these charts um, for my speed of service. And um, anyway, that was really motivating for me. And by the time I was um, several years later with more experience, I ended up doing, um, by the time I was done, I was, I now take orders in 35 or 40 seconds, but depending on the customers mostly. So that's something I really love. Let me get started with, um, with the training solution. So what is, so what is OneClick? A uh, quick review on OneClick. OneClick app um, imports all the shifts from hot schedules. Um, it makes it super easy to assign um, employees to different positions throughout the day. Um, and we have digital tools for the digital age. So what that looks like, if you can follow my screen is, um, uh, on, on this app, it pulls over all the shifts from hot schedules um, with the times and dates, and then it makes it really super easy to drag people into mobile drinks. Um, oh, wait, it didn't. Come on, bud. Zoom share. Come on, Zoom. I need you. I need you, Zoom. I'm going to try this. Share screen, this one. Okay, so it makes it really super easy to drag people over from hot schedules on the right um, or off from the roster on the right and then put them as a driver or as a stalker or, or dining room or whatever else. So, um, so if that's one click, then, then what is the training in one click? Um, the training in one click, what's, one thing that's really powerful <laughs> is that because this is software, we can do way more. And so although like in the past at my store, we had a spreadsheet and we would type out all the names on a spreadsheet and then you type them into another place on the spreadsheet. And that's pretty great. But one thing that we're able to do with the software is we're able to insert in more information. And so like, for example, on this list over here, instead of just seeing a list of names, we can insert in like their leadership role and say, hey, Cameron, I know that she's a shift leader and we can display that. Um, and then like where it shows that Cameron is assigned a shift leader, we can display that and it updates. Um, and so the main focus today is how one click works with the training information. Um, you'll notice here, Autumn has been trained on desserts. And so it shows that on her, on her profile and the shift leaders can use that um, when they're creating their setups. I'll give it, I'll give an example of that later. So how does it work? Well, on the one hand, trainers put in ratings. And so there are several ways to do that. Um, one of the easiest ways is to use this rating prompts button right on the top um, to use this rating prompts screen and it's going to automatically um, analyze the layout it's going to compare the training data it already has based on the training data that based on what it sees and it's going to make suggestions um, for which ratings you could potentially put in. And so Sadie is new here do you want to go ahead and register um, train her or something you can click on one of these we'll go with uh, Rachel. And it's going to take her to Rachel's employee profile. This is a demo account. And so it's um, obfuscated and, and randomized. Um, but it's going to automatically take you into the screen where you can put in a rating for her. So we can give her, how was she on register? Well, she was pretty she was pretty good on accuracy. Her hospitality was very good. Um, she definitely needs to practice some more in her understanding of the register, though. Um, actually, I'm going to put it like this. I think that her accuracy was, was decent, but it's definitely not up to par yet. Just her first day. 
and um, her understanding of the of the employees and everything was was not great. And so I could write a quick note about how Rachel um, was doing well for her first day. Her customer service um, was spectacular, but she still needs to become more. More familiar with the register system and making drinks. A, another day of training with a trainer would make a big difference. Bam. One click is going to average the scores that I gave her. So these each of these scores out of five is going to average them together. It's going to show me what I'm about to write and I can submit it. Bam. Okay, so I just did a rating. So what do you do? So trainers put in ratings and then managers can see all the ratings. So I know this is kind of overpowered. You don't really get this with a piece of paper. Um, some stores, like some people have like spreadsheets and stuff to do this kind of a task, but OneClick has this built in. So OneClick is going to gather all, all that information and put it in this training dashboard. Um, you can see when I sort of by last updated that Rachel um, was just barely received new ratings a few seconds ago, and this is her score, and this is where she's at. Um, on IPOS, she was okay. It looks like I accidentally typed it on IPOS. I wasn't paying that much attention. My bad. And but on on Frank Counter, she actually has a really good score. And so you can look through the employees and review them and make decisions. Um, and then, of course, what do you do with that? Well, you make decisions and you say, all right, well, Rachel had one day of training on IPOS, so let's schedule another day to help her train some more. So you can do that. And so you would sit down and um, you might even look on here on her schedule and say, all right, we want, we want to train Rachel some more on IPOS. So it looks like um, today's the Wednesday, Thursday, she's working the day shift. That's not going to give her some time, but... Um, probably this one on, but Fridays are busy. So you could choose and say, all right, Monday, she has a leadership shift. Um, Tuesday, I guess we'll have to do it during the slow time. So like 10 o'clock on Tuesday, we can put her on an IPOS. And so you could go on here on Tuesday, 10 o'clock. We create a 10 o'clock set up. And we could put Rachel on IPOS. And say, all right, Rachel's going to keep training, and that's going to be in the morning time. But we'll go train her with um, Katie because Katie's really good at, at IPS. And we'd write a little note: training. Rachel, follow up on IPS with Katie in the morning. Bam. And so now we've written some notes. We've looked ahead all the way to Tuesday. We've planned out our shifts a little bit. We've looked at our training and we're going to help Rachel. We're going to give her the tools that she needs to keep practicing, get better. We'll even give her another person who can help her in the job. So trainers put in ratings. <clears throat> then you'll notice that on the shift, shift leaders have insight um, into what's going on. And so over here where it's indicating how much somebody knows, it's going to indicate that Rachel has started learning IPOS. It's red. Um, and it's italicized because she's not good at it yet. We gave her a, a 2.7 rating is, is not all the way qualified yet. So it's going to show up as red. But it is showing the leaders that she started learning. She could do it during slow times and um, there's room for improvement. And so and they have that um, they have that insight. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, this makes it really easy um, when shift leaders are creating setups. So I've already created these setups, but for example, if we were to go to tonight and, <clears throat> and start doing our setups, so one click is going to, by default, sort all your team when you're creating your setup by, um, by their leadership. And so when you're just looking at your blank setups, you're like, all right, who are my best people on my team? Well, those are the people you have on top. So here I've got Annika, a team leader. I've got Kennedy, a driver. I've got three baggers, dang. Addison, Brian, and Erica, and then I've got some desserts people, and, and so these are going to be my key people on the shift, and they're going to be right on top for you, which is really easy and convenient when the shift leaders are creating this. So now what do you do? If I were to um, do a setup as a shift leader, pretend I'm a shift leader now, and I'm creating my setup, well, first of all, I'm going to take Annika, and I'm going to put her straight in the team leader spot. All right, that was nice and easy.
Kennedy driver. Um, I know she's a driver, but I don't feel like I need a driver yet for tonight. So we'll go ahead and put Addison um, bagging. And then we've got Bryson from counter bagger and Erica, we're gonna need our second drive-through bagger. Um, Tears, we'll put her on desserts. Cash cart, um, we'll need him on window though. Alexia can do drinks. We'll put, all right, all right. We'll put Bridger on cash cart. We'll put Kinsley on window. Jared has started learning cash cart. So we'll go ahead and put him on IPOS because he'll be good there. Miley on IPOS, Brianna, um, Passer, Noani, IPOS. And then we've got our front counter people. So let's see, Ella, register, register, um, mobile drinks, dining room. Uh, let's see if we can put her as a stalker. And if we need her as a driver, we'll do that. Jeremiah, runner, um, mobile runner, another dining room, McKay, front counter. And you can, you can do that process. And as a shift leader, it was really helpful to have all that information. It basically did my job for me. I said, okay, I need to fill in my most important positions first. And so I did that. I took my baggers first. Then after that, I did my window and then my drinks. And then after this, of course, I can like rearrange. It's like, all right, actually, Addison and Erica, they are having some feud. They're not going to work together. So I'll just put Erica on front counter bagger and we'll swap her out for Bryce on the waffles. Like way too easy, not a problem. Um, but the like having that training information available um, makes a big difference and really, really makes it um, really makes things possible. So uh, what else is this helpful for? You can use, because it's, it's keeping history, you can actually go through and use these, um, use these ratings and the, the information that your trainers are putting in um, for quarterly review processes or for um, promotion or um, like pay raise decisions. And so say for example, um, Emily is coming in and I have a quarterly review with her. Well, I can come in and look at em Emily's employee profile, I can look at her ratings. Like, okay, Emily, it looks like you're doing really good on front counter, really good on cash cart. Um, we love having you have a driver, driver as well. Um, let's see on desserts and on drinks, what's going on? Well, on drinks, that was nine months ago. It's probably a little outdated. We might want to look at that. Are you doing, do you like working on drinks? Have you gotten better? What are your thoughts about that? And also on desserts, let's see. I don't know, see the desserts rating, that's weird. <clears throat> But you can look through this and say, all right, just recently you earned a foreign cash card, like good for you. And on front counter, we really love having you on our team. Um, let's, let's talk, let's make some decisions. And, and um, you're a really valuable asset, especially in the, in the drive-through cockpit for us. We love having you there. So when it comes down to it, um, how can I use training? Well, it's super simple, not complicated. Um, what you do is you can tell your trainer, say, hey, trainers, um, use the rating prompt button to put in ratings. Um, if you want to put in a rating for somebody that's not on the shift, then you can do that. Go to their employee profile, search for their name, say, for example, Kent. And you can put in a rating for anything you want, wherever you want. Okay, nice and easy. Another thing that's important to note is that um, a lot of your trainers, well, some of your trainers, like high school students, a lot of high school students have phones, some of them don't. Um, one click does not require, um, does not require all your employees to have their own phones. Um, if you're an existing customer, you know that all of the team already has access to log in based on this email address, which is the one that's listed in hot schedules on their profile. And so they can log in and, and access that. Um, but if they, if they don't have a phone or they don't have a computer or they don't have Wi-Fi at home or whatever, um, there are systems built in to access these trainings and, and use all these tools from the store um, just, with their, just with their pin. And so if I were to, for example, set this up on Kent, I would put in Kent's, um, Kent's pin. And I'm going to choose to use his clock in pin because that's going to make things nice and simple. But I don't know what his clock in pin is, so I'm just going to put in 6789. This is just a one-time setup. You'll need to do this for any, uh, any trainer or leader that wants to use this sign-in pin functionality on one-click app um, because they don't have their own phone or something. So now that we've set up Kent's pin 6789, now he can log in with this cowboy hat icon. Um, it's gonna ask him for his pin and he's gonna put in that pin we just put in 6789. Bam. And now I'm signed in as 
Kent. And so I'm sending this Kent. And when I go to put in a rating, I'm going to put, it's going to show up under Kent's name. So let's go put in a rating for like Josiah. Down here, we'll notice that it's posting this rating as Kent. And so this is a really helpful tool for, um, for stores to be able to let their say, hey, we know you don't have a phone, but just go in the back office, take 10 minutes, um, use, the, use the cowboy hat um, and, and do your ratings real quick before you go home. Because um, we, we, A, we need that information and, um, and that'll make it really easy. Or you can even use an iPad. They can use the iPad and type up a rating on the iPad, do the same clock in pin. It's, it's totally not a problem. Okay, I talked about training managers reviewing the training dashboard. Um, the whole training meetings and councils, that's not part of one click, of course. That's, that's, your, own, that's your own thing. Your, your, it's your training program, your store. Um, but you would want to look at this information and, and make decisions. You're like, all right. So say, for example, we need some more team leaders. We're running low on team leaders. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to look at who are our best people, like our baggers, who are our best baggers. I'm going to sort this. Um, training dashboard by highest position. And I'm going to start looking, all right, Kobe's a good bagger, Bonnie's a good bagger, Erica's a good bagger, Bryson, and then Addison's still learning. All right, all right. And so you start talking, you have these discussions with your leadership team, with your training team, who's ready to move up, who's not ready to move up. Um, and you, you make those kinds of decisions. And it's all powered because it's, it's here. You have the information to make these kinds of decisions. And I also demonstrated how you can communicate that information to leaders in one click app. Um, after you come up with a decision and say, all right, this is who we want to train and they are ready for this. Well, then you can look at their schedule and you can find the next shift where that would be a good opportunity. Um, you might not want to do it on Fridays and Saturdays, but you could you find a weekday during the slow periods and then type in some training notes and even go so far as to um, put them right on the setup. And so then when the shift leaders uh, come through a second time to, you know, actually do their setups, they would put in everybody else and fill in the rest of the positions, but not mess with Rachel because Rachel's already in IPOS and there's already a note up here talking about training. Now I want to talk about some of the mechanics. Uh, we talked, we, we said we're getting down to the meat and potatoes. So we're going to go we're going to talk a little bit about the mechanics so you understand what's going on. Um, but basically, it's important to understand that one click app is leveraging the intuition of your leaders. And so, like this system, this system was developed by, well, I developed this system while I was working on the floor at Chick fil A. And so, I was looking at leaders stare at the iPad or before I built it, it stare at the papers and stare at the spreadsheets. And then the question is, what are they trying to do? And how can I help them do that thing better? And so one click app has that intuition, like that intuition from the shift leaders is baked in. Um, and it makes it really simple. Um, specifically, based on all the, all the training scores that go into these different columns, one click app calculates the most advanced position that an employee learns. And so this is based on the intuition where you train people in one position at a time. You start them as, as a runner, dining room, sauce cart, and you move up through a, it's not exact, it's not precise, but it's pretty close to about the same progression. And it ends with baggers and windows on the top and headset on the top. Um, those are the most advanced positions. And so on this training dashboard, those are these are each of these columns. And basically what it's looking for is it's looking for the, the most advanced position, the position farthest to the right that has a passing score, at least a three. Um, visually, it's represented with this blue color. So if it has a blue color or more, um, then that's calculated. And we can kind of represent that if I start this by the highest um, position, it's going to take all the data we've already put in and it's going to range them by their highest position. And so you can see that um, these are our directors, these are our managers, our shift leaders, team leaders, trainers. And then Everybody else doesn't have a leadership role. And so here we go. Here are our best drivers, our best baggers, um, desserts, cash cart, window, IPOS, front counter, front counter, front counter, front counter, front counter, server. And this is a demo store. I don't spend a lot of time putting in a bunch of information. Um, but you'll notice that this training dashboard has this kind of shape where you have this outermost edge of these highest positions marked. And sometimes these red ones are out because they've started learning something else, but they're not all the way there yet. So these red ones are on the outside, but this represents where people are in their progression. And so for example, if Chet 
were to start learning drinks um, and he were get to receive a passing score in drinks, then he would move up and he'd be up here. And this is the same sort order that they display on, on the shift roster. So over here, they're um, in this highest training sort, which the auto sort also uses. It's gonna base it based on that same sort that we're noticing um, in this special view at the highest position. Um, another key thing is that one click learns your team over time. Um, hot schedules kind of does this uh, where they have the front of house schedule and the back of house schedule and you put people on the different schedules. Um, but there's kind of a gap because like there's the leadership schedule and the leadership schedule isn't on either the front of house or the back of house schedule. So what do you do with that? Well, one click learns to put those on one or the other. And so like as a, as a new customer, when you start out, it looks, it has all of them in like in one big old list. But as you start using, uh, as you start putting people into positions on the setup screen, and as you start putting in ratings, it learns, hey, Jessica is in front counter, but she's not in back of house. And it learns that and it stops filtering them by default. And of course, there are advanced options. You can see everyone. Um, so you notice there's 170 total employee records in this demo store account. Um, but we can filter it for just the back of house. And if you're already a customer, you know that we also support back of house. Like we, we do the whole front of house, back. we know how that goes. And so this icon right here, the fork and knife will switch you into the back of house mode. So notice now we're only looking at 38 employee records down at the bottom of my screen. We have a totally new set of um, training positions, fries, buns, screens, primary, secondary, totally new. And all the, tr all the information is tracked separate for the back of house. And it's learning who should be in the back of house and who should not be in the back of house based on the ratings and the way that you use your app. And so it's pretty intelligent. Um, quick note here, this is not about training, but we do have um, plans to make our imports from hot schedules intelligent with this same mechanic, um, which will help with the leadership schedules and back of house shift leaders and training in the front and back of house. So that's a future, that's a future improvement that we do plan on adding uh, soon. All right, so assume this is working really well for you. Maybe you are already using the system um, and you just wanna start using, you wanna use the training module more or say you're just trying to understand what are the benefits? Okay, well, what do I tell my trainers? Well, for my trainers, there's a couple of key principles to understand. First of all, <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch my share. I've been following, all right, here we go, stop share. Screen share, this one. In case you've been wondering, I've been referencing this, this slideshow the whole time. You haven't been able to see it because Zoom, anyway. Um, but we'll send, this, we'll send these slides out so you can reference them afterwards. Um, for the trainers, it's important to recognize that consistent feedback with meaningful details helps employees improve. For me, I did this by myself. I'm really special. I'm, I'm a weird kid. I get that, I know. I would go and I'd ask my leaders every day for feedback. <coughs> what did I do? What can I do better? Can I have my speed of service reports? Well, I do that. Most people don't do that. I get that. And so if you want to run a, a, a really effective, nice training program, what you can do is you can offer that feedback more often. And so as you consistently offer, hey, your scores were looking good. I noticed you shaved off three seconds from last shift. That's really great. Um, Last time when we, I saw you, I, you were struggling to put the straws in, but this time I saw you putting in the straws and marking the Diet Cokes correctly on, this, on the drinks, like good job. Um, and that kind of feedback, consistent feedback matters. And in addition to that, writing it down, recording it, um, in one click writing in these ratings and writing down those details, a, it helps me remember it. Um, like when I was, so I, I eventually moved up and I became a trainer at my store. And, um, and for me, like with a whole team of like a hundred people, and obviously I don't train all of them myself, but when I'm trying to remember everybody's names and where are they at and how are they progressing and what are they good at, writing it down is sometimes the only way that I can keep track of that information. Oftentimes my mantra is, um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know that answer, but one click does. So let's go look at one click. Or I forgot how much I trained them. So let me go look at the notes I wrote in one click and I'll see, okay, what did I train you last time? And this time we can start from that place and keep going. 
usually I would do that ahead. If I were to train somebody, I would go and review what has already been taught. And then before my shift, I'd review and say, okay, based on what's already been taught, I'm going to teach these new specific things that are going to be the most valuable for uh, this employee, this specific employee. So having a, a place to write it down matters. Um, yes, especially when you're trying to do this for a lot of people, say 100 or 150 or even if you're only trying to do 40, one person trying to keep four, track of 40 people, it's hard. Another thing that's really valuable, and you saw this when I was doing the ratings, is that one click provides these default standards. It's going to automatically prompt you to rate them on things like accuracy and speed of service and communication and productivity. Um, and those are customized and they're different for the different positions, and you can customize them even more to your store if you want. But having those standards there provides a like as a trainer, it helps me focus on what's important. I'm not over here rating them on how much lipstick did they put on and is their hair smelling good today? But no, it's like, no, are you serving the customers? Like, are you smiling um, and having this friendly attitude? Are you using the core four language? Are you able to take orders at the window in 20 seconds? Or are we always waiting for you for 40 seconds? Like, are you able to put the two drinks with the bag, make sure the, the straw gets in, put in the sauces, napkin and give it out in the window? Or are you messing that up? And having these standards helps me evaluate them on what actually matters to the business. If you're trying to upgrade, um, if you're trying to upgrade your training program, these are some examples of things you might say to your trainers um, to do this. Now, heads up, these are not going to be complicated. So if you're expecting something complicated and fancy, yeah, that, that's not this. Here we go. When you do training, I need you to write about it. <laughs> As in, when people go and train people, but it's not recorded anywhere, it doesn't matter, basically. It basically doesn't matter because nobody knows about it. And so even though the employee did learn something and they do that, the shift leaders don't know, the manager doesn't know, I don't know, the, like nobody knows. And so whenever you train somebody on anything, you need to write about it in one click and make sure it's there, do a rating, type it in, it's not hard. and and that, that's just what you need to do. I'll even give you 15 minutes at the end of your shift. You can, you can stop working 15 minutes early and go write in. And I'll pay you for 15 minutes to write in some notes about, um, about the shift. Who did you see? Who was doing good? Who was not doing good that we need to know about? Um, and who's growing? Did you learn, teach? What are some of the things you can do? Another thing you might say, a policy you might use in your stores, you might say, at least twice a week, I want you to write ratings for somebody on your shift. So if you're only working two shifts a week, I want you at least twice a week. So for your two shifts, use the rating prompts button or something else and do two ratings a week, maybe three, maybe four you choose. That's your policy. I mean, you're in charge, but um, but be consistently putting in ratings. The idea here is not to solve all the things all at once. The idea here is to have a solution, a, a pattern that you can follow that works consistently. Um, and, and this pattern um, does that actually. Uh, we've have, we have customers that have been using us for um, four years. We've got customers that have been using us for about a year now. And we have a bunch of customers that are now starting to use this. And so this is not a new system. We are growing and we're expanding a lot. But the, the ideas and the principles here are not new. They've been tested and refined over time. You can use the rating prompts button. Um, you might also say, all right, this month, we're going to really focus on training. So during the slow days, every, like every shift during the slow period, here's a big list of like 20 people. And we've already prepared 20 people that we want to be training on, say, IPOS, because it's we need more people on IPOS. And um, so I want you to always be consistently working with these people, looking out for these people on your shift, and then making an effort to um, teach them new things or coach them and help them get better um, in IPOS so that they can serve the guests better so they can take orders more accurately. So we stop, you know, like handing out the wrong food and stop messing up the card descriptions or whatever, whatever it is you need to teach them, like continue teaching them those things and make sure you write about it so that we have some feedback. This is really helpful. If we start looking through our feedback and an employee is consistently not getting good scores and consistently slacking off or whatever, then that's evident and you can make a decision based on that. And I'm not gonna tell you what decision to make. 
You can also tell them it, you can use your own phones, use your own computer or whatever. But if you don't have one, whatever, just go use the, the computer in the back office, use the iPad, use your sign-in pin and, um, and do your ratings. So if that's what I tell my trainers, what do I tell my team? Well, you can tell your team some really meaningful things. Check this out. <clears throat> We want to help you grow and expand your skills at the store. As in, I know that you're only in dining room right now, James, but we want to help you get better. We want to help you move and progress past just dining room. We're gonna, we want to teach you register. We want to teach you window. Window ended up being my favorite position, by the way. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to do it in an orderly way. We're going to keep track of how well you're doing. And if you show that you're good at the little things you do now, then we'll teach you how to do more things. And we expect you to do well in those. We need you to be a good performer on our team. Uh, so OneClick has some criteria built in. You could provide, you could consider giving them the list of the criteria. Look, our trainers are going to are going to rate you on these things. They're going to rate you on how accurate you are. They're going to rate you on how how productive you are. They're going to rate you on how good your second mile service is. They're going to rate you on your communication with other team members. And just be aware of that. It's coming, like they're going to do it. Um, so just take this opportunity now to learn, get better, and A, help us be better as a store. And also you're going to find this more fun too. When you're better at your job, you're going to like it more. And we're going to teach you more things and you'll have more fun working in the store as a whole. You might also decide to make some policies and you could do this whatever you wanted, but you could say something like, we expect you to have a score of three in one click if you wanna work in a certain position. Uh, in one click, this coordinates to having the gray, the, the gray color on the highest position. If it's red, then you don't have a three um, because it's red. But so it, we expect you to have at least a three score if you're gonna be working um, on a certain position. And um, like, for example, a lot of people love doing in my store, like dining room is the first position and like not the most fun. And so when you're learning, like, especially when you're first learning and you wanna be doing register, oh, you wanna go do IPOS, cool, like super fancy. And it, it is, and it really does matter for a lot of employees. Well, you can say, well, this is what it takes to earn a three. We need you to be doing those things. And one of these includes taking orders in 55 seconds or less which is not even the standard. Standard knee train is like 45, but we need you to be doing at least 55 seconds um, in order to be considered to do IPOS during a rush. And so if you wanna do that, well, here are the criteria, we'll coach you, like ask for help, but we're gonna hold you to these standards. And that's for your good and also for our good and also for the good of the customers. If um, you get a score of four, oh, go back. If you get a score of four, that's when we'll consider teaching you an exposition. So three, you're qualified to work there, but it's not until you get a four that we're going to try looking to teach you the next position. Like, okay, so you've got a three on IPOS, but it does not mean we're going to immediately start teaching you window or desserts or the next thing or headset. We're going to, we're going to wait. And so we're, it's defined. This is what it means. Just, just know that that's what it means. And when you get there, then come ask us and we'll talk and we'll train you. And we love that. You might even say, and when you get a score of four, that comes with a certain raise, 25 cents or whatever. You don't have to do that. That's your own option. Like you choose. Um, we're not the policymakers. It's your store, but you could do that. And you could also, for example, say something like, if you want to be considered for a leadership role, you need to be getting five scores in it. Like you need to be being rated as a five by the rate, by the training team. If you're not, if you're not earning fives, um, in at least three different positions and you're not even on the table to be considered to be a trainer or to be a team leader or anything because you're just, you're, you gotta be good. Like we expect our leaders to be the best. We expect them to be good examples. And um, we're gonna give you, we'll show you, this is what it means, this is how you can get there and we'll coach you, but um, we are gonna hold you to these standards. We're gonna expect you to, to, to learn. We're gonna expect you to be good. So that's, that's how you could implement training in your store. Lots of ideas. Um, that's how it works. That's how it works. And I'm sure you're just like, wow, that was really complicated. Actually, like, it's pretty simple. Um, the whole point of one click is to centralize information and make it unified. And so you're not going to be looking around on a bunch of different um, just a bunch of different like pages, like a bunch of different areas, it's gonna be all in one place. So let's talk about some of the ways you can customize one click to make it work just the way you need it to. First of all, you can customize the training positions. So I showed in my store, we had to set up server um, 
server, dining room, register, the certain order. And you can customize, add, remove, delete, change, reorder, all the things to whatever your store does, uh, which is going to be different. Um, you can also develop your own rating criteria, or you can use our defaults. We don't want to make things hard on you. Or you can use both. <laughs> you can take our defaults and adjust them a little bit and come up with what you think is best for your store. And this is what the, like all these training columns, you can customize for the back of house and for the front of house independently of each other um, to match whatever your store does. Um, this is not exactly related to training, but I did throw it in here just to be complete. Um, you can also customize the leadership progression. Um, so this is a pretty standard default one, team member, trainer, team leader, shift leader, manager, and we'll skip long-term employee and we'll like director. Um, if you call them assistant directors or executive directors or um, like champions or outside champions or whatever, you can, you can customize that to what your store needs. Side note. Okay. You can also customize the rating privacy options. Now, by default, um, only trainers and above can see and edit the ratings. Um, this is really nice, and it gives a lot of um, it gives a lot of room because your leaders can write what they need to. They can vent. They can be really honest and candid with their feedback. They can do whatever they need to write about it, and trust that the trainers can see it, the training manager can see it, but the employees who you're writing about, they're not going to see these things. So you can, you can totally just lay it out there, tell the truth. They actually did really suck on headset today. They were dropping drinks. It was a disaster. They were behind in the red the whole shift. Um, they were mean with the other employees and made some snarky comments towards the customers. You can write all that and trust that you can be honest. And that's it. That's the default option provided in one click, but there are other options. Another option is a personal feedback configuration. So you can, you can customize it so that employees can see their own ratings. As in when a, ship, when, a, when a trainer writes a rating for James, I can log in and I can see my ratings um, and say, oh, this is what they told me. And this would, you would use this if you wanted to have a tighter feedback loop. So trainers are putting out the information and, and employees can read it for themselves and learn and grow on their own time. Obviously they don't have to. Um, but that, that's an option. We can configure that for you. What that might look like, that might result in not being able to write as much negative things in there, but that's okay. Maybe you want to focus on positive comments in your store, and that's great. You can do that. You can also configure it to be totally open, as in anybody can write a rating for any other team member. Um, some stores do this. They say, you know what? We don't really have a training program. We just want any, everybody to be able to contribute um, and come in and, and build up this wealth of knowledge that we have in our in our training dashboard we want to build that up and anybody can contribute well we can configure it that way um, by default it won't let them do ratings for themselves so i can't just go in and say oh james is the best james is the best james no, i can't just do that <laughs> somebody else needs to come and put in ratings for me but i can put in ratings for any other person and it's also customizable if you want to like you can set it up to have you write ratings on any other person but not be able to read ratings for other people so that's that's separate and you can customize that the way you want um yep so i just talked about that and then you also could go into a private mode so trainers only trainers and above can write ratings but the trainers can't read any of the ratings only the managers can read things you might want to run your store that way we support that you can do that or with these options you can mix and match and choose different things we actually have a bunch of options for configuring permissions. Um, permissions are built into one click from the ground. Okay, great. Let's just go over some of the quick benefits. I'm wrapping up. Oh, time's coming close. I want to get to some of the questions, so I'm going to go fast. Um, it's super simple, really easy to use. It's integrated with your shifts and positions. It's flexible. Um, you can schedule your day leaders in the night, and they can run a decent shift without knowing their team because one click is storing a lot of that data for them. It's dependable. It's software. It runs on Google products. It doesn't go down. It's there for you. It's consistent. Um, some leaders come and go. Leaders will take different systems with them. But our software is simple enough to, to stay behind and keep working even after employees go. Um, we've seen this happen. We have some stores. We have one store that's been using us for four years. Um, we have other stores that have been using us for a little over a year. And even in stores that haven't been using us for very many months, um, some of them have already had turnover of their managers, and the main person who got, got us set up with them has moved on, but the store continues using us because we're just that easy. 
Um, it also pooled resources. So we've done a lot of development and we've gathered feedback from a lot of different Chick-fil-A's and it's all gone into the system and you can benefit from that. Um, and then of course, consistently training your team and consistently teaching and helping people move up um, gives you a stronger team. So you're not short staffed. So you can like, hey, dang, we don't have enough people. We don't have enough baggers tonight. And they're like, no, like, we're gonna teach. We're gonna make baggers out of our team. Um, real quick, beta pre I just wanna give a preview of what's coming in next in our next release. Um, we have rotation timers coming. So if you're already using our rotating buddies um, in the next release this month, January, you're going to see these timers that keep track of how long um, it's been since each of these rotate sets were rotated. Um, so that's coming next. Um, we also have this break view that's coming. This is actually already outdated. We've um, upgraded it. We've added in some icons thanks to Trey in um, California, PCH and Maple El Segundo. Give us some feedback. We're, getting, we're making this better. It's coming in the next release this month. Um, we are changing a couple of default behaviors. Uh, we're disabling the pending break state by default. You can re-enable it if you want, but we feel like most of the stores, most of the users are going to find this uh, really nice and it's going to simplify uh, the process. Uh, we changed the look ahead behavior so you're not going to see shifts um, popping up, extra shifts that not actually at the time. So that's, that's changed. And also we've, um, for stores that don't use the training program, um, we're going to change, we're going to remove these ones by default. If you want, we can put it back, um, but we think that that will be um, a better default behavior, but we can change it if you want. A um, couple other options, you can add a second notes area to the bottom of your layouts. You can restrict the two times multiple position icons. Um, so this is what the notes look like. You can have two note areas if you want to do that. And also big one, you. Um, this month, we're going to have the ability to import shifts from hot schedules based on the job ID, the job code. So not only by schedules, but by job codes. And that's going to make a big difference for a lot of stores. You'll be able to fine tune and get it working just the way you need it to for your store. Um, so we're excited about that. It's coming soon. Also coming up soon, not this month, but eventually, um, we've already started doing our private beta um, tests of our layout editor um, so that you can make simple changes to your layout without us. You can try out new plans for a day or a week and change it back. Uh, you can customize one click to work really just the way you want. And it's super easy to do that. Um, and here's a preview of some of the improvements we have coming to the training program soon. Um, we've been working with Drew Turner from Flowery Branch, Georgia to um, build in default score averaging. Um, so that scores average themselves by default. Uh, this is helpful like so employees can um both weigh in on the same employee on the same position and like average those together um, and we've also been working with adam smith to do training data exposure and now i'm going to stop and shut up and it's time for questions so we have a couple of questions from nathan wells in the chat and then we have three questions from emma uh, but i think uh can you hear me james yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Nathan's question is a is a is a good one. Can we add items that we want to track for training and not have it show up on the roster board? Um. Yes. Answer. Yes. Great. Uh, the other questions from Emma. Uh, oh, he actually asked another question. Can we add different? A different department instead of just front of house and back of house, could we uh, have like marketing and HR instead? So answer yes. Um, usually our tools aren't that helpful for marketing and HR. Um, one thing we have seen helpful is like delivery. So if you're running a delivery, we can add another one front of house, back of house, and a third one delivery, or we can build it in so it's on the front of house setup or the back of house one. So there are options we can configure it the way you want. Um, and if you want, we could do marketing and HR. Um, yes, that is something we could do. Question is, do you want it? Uh, Emma is asking, um, we're really interested in the training module, but we understand that we have to have uh, the, another module for, in order for the training one to work. Uh, is it possible to just have the training module, module by itself? So that's a good question. Um, right now, that's not, that's not something we do. We don't have anybody doing that. Um, if you're really that interested, um, we could talk about it. We could come up with a solution. Um, I would be interested to, I think our, I think our shifts module is pretty great. 
Um, and I really think a lot of the value comes by putting the two together. Um, you can already create a system of Google Docs and Google Forms to gather information. And you can do that without one click. But a lot of the value we provide is by putting in, like mixing training plus shifts, putting them together. Um, but if you're really interested, we could talk about that. Send us an email at support at oneclickapp.com. She has another question. Would this work with, uh, with the multi-unit setup where one operator is running two different stores? So we're actually, we have another customer asking us this question. Um, right now, the way it works is it's going to track both of the units separately. Um, and so, yes, it works if you have multiple units. Um, the operators and stuff can look at both stores independently. Um, right now, it's not going to like, well, right now, if you do training and doing ratings in one store, they're not going to be in the other store as well. Um, usually, that hasn't been a problem so far because in most of the stores that use us, um, they might share some leaders between both stores, but their their main team is focused on just one. Um, but if this is a problem, if this is a thing that you want to do, we'd love to talk with you, and I will figure it out, and we'll get better to meet the needs that you have. Another question from Nathan is, how soon would the, would the breaks feature be ready to go? And Nathan may not know that we did launch the advanced breaks feature. Um, I think he was talking about the break view feature. Oh. Um, and actually, it's already ready to go. Um, on our special beta.oneclickapp.com, um, we run a beta version of our website and of our app. And the breaks view has actually been on the beta version for about a month and a half now. So you can see that right now. Go to beta.oneclickapp.com. Uh, Emma's also asking if we can put her in contact with other Chick fil A's in our area. And and uh, I can go ahead and send that information over to Ryan to, to send you more on that. Jasmine Lark is asking, can you change the ratings to higher than five? Which is interesting because another Chick-fil-A, the one in uh, Lehigh, Utah, asked if we could actually change it to just three. So in interesting questions. So right now, that the, yes, the answer is yes, we could do that. Um, we haven't done that yet. Um, uh, right now, we just do the five-star system. You can customize how the five-star system works. But if you want a different system, we're open to that idea, and we can um, customize it to work for you. Those are great questions. I'm glad that people ask those questions. Answer live. Answer live. Um, answer live. And uh, yeah, we answered that one live, too. Anybody got some more questions? Do we want to let them like speak if they want to? Is that an option? Yeah, and I think I, I turned the hosting over to you. And uh, if anybody would like to speak, please raise your hand uh, so we can give you the microphone. Hmm, Nathan Wells. Hey, Nathan. Hey, James. So uh, I asked the question earlier, I guess, just to clarify. So like, I know there's front of house and back of house. We would want to keep that. We'd want to basically add like another division. So like delivery, as you said, would be one. So can, I just wanted to make sure you can have more than two. Yeah, let me show you an example. Um, let's share my screen. Let's see. I'm new to Zoom. I'm going to be honest. I'm new to Zoom. Share. OK, so here's an example. And I'm going to pause my share. And I'm going to go to another store. Um, this one is called Georgia Street in Texas. Crazy name, I know. Okay, so here in Georgia Street, Texas, um, they have a they have a front of house setup. They have a back of house setup like this, and they have a delivery setup. Um, and so there are three different ones. And you can cust we can customize that to work the way you want it to. Um, let me pause my share again, and I'm going to switch to another store. Um, this one is also in Texas. This one is the Westgate Mall. This Westgate Mall location is really small. Um, and so they only have like 30 employees total. Like that's it, like 30 employees. So we combined all of them into one. So we've got like their front counter and dining room merged together here. We've got the back of their kitchen and then a little delivery area all in one page. 
because they're really small and that's just what they have. Does that okay, answer your question? You. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Thanks for asking that, Nathan. I appreciate it. Thanks, Drew. Hey, I was just talking with Drew the other day. Drew Turner, yep. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I want some more questions, but until somebody asks a question, I'm gonna just gonna show off something else that I've been, um, that we've been working on. So this is one of those training improvements I told you about. This is on a special beta version, um, but we've been playing with the ability to actually display um, the score of a given employee in the where they're assigned. So notice how on this setup, um, we've got um, we've got all these employees assigned in different positions. And then over here, it's one click has already been doing this. It's already been showing you where they're assigned. So it shows you it's assigned in IPOS. But we're playing with the ability to also indicate, hey, um, Grace is assigned a runner and she has a four as a runner. She's got a little blue star and she's a runner. There. So great. Um, or Richard has a crown in dining room because he has a five in dining room. And Anna uh, doesn't have a rating in dining room as, as a register on shakes. And so we're still working on the details and on uh, making it work the right way. But we're experimenting with that. And we think that this will be a good way to kind of surface more of that training information and make it more visible. Hey, I've got this. Um, this shift strength score is already taking this into account. So the shift strength score is already available. It's on the, it's on the production version. And it's doing it, it's looking at all those scores and it averages it together into this 3.8. But this would expand that and show you, hey, let's check this out. All right. Since I still don't have a question, I'm just going to keep going. And I'm going to show off our layout editor, uh, which is currently in private beta. Um, Go ahead and if you want to be invited to the private beta, go ahead and invite yourself. Send us an email at support at oneclickapp.com. Um, the layout editor allows you to choose um, a setup for the day and uh, like manage it. And so it's a set of tools to do this. Previously, we've only done this manually by hand. Um, but with these layout editors, you can now say, actually, I don't need a driver. We don't, we don't need a driver. So I'm just going to like hide it or uh, we don't need a driver, but we do need, um, not a stalker, but we need someone to, uh, I don't know, I already have a bunch here, stalker. We need somebody to like check the trashes. On. Trashes, sure. And say, actually, we don't need two stalkers. So let's just go ahead and we only need one stalker. And, um, you know, things like that. So you can make all these kind of minor adjustments um oh, we'll make it dt stalker dt stalker front counter stalker yeah that's going to be plenty and so you can go ahead and and make these kinds of edits to your to your setups by yourself and save them and um and use them so that's currently in private beta if you want to be invited send us an email at support at oneclickapp.com Emma Morrill, how does support and demo work for getting started? Great question, Emma. So uh, we have a form. Uh, it asks some of the questions that we need to get it set up. We actually have a shorter, uh, simpler version of the form. Basically, what we want to do is we want to get it set up pretty close to how your store is already doing it so it feels familiar. And then um, ongoing, we provide free support. So at any time, any customer, not a customer, whatever, send us an email at support at oneclickapp.com. And we'll respond and we'll do the thing. And we currently do most of the things manually, but we are working. One of the things we've been working on recently is the are the tools to let you do your own kinds of customization, not to not to replace us, not because we don't want to be available, but because I mean, we're humans. And if you could just do it by yourself, some people like that. Um, so there's a. Yeah, so go to our, our website, oneclickapp.com slash free dash trial. Um, and right now it's a long form, but if you send us an email instead, I'll send you the short version, which is not all the way done yet, but it'll get the trick done. All right. I just asked another quick question. Uh, can you add, well, he just add, can you add the same person to more than one position at a time? Oh, great question. 
So that's actually demonstrated here. Do you see um, on my screen all these two X positions? So what that means is Kylie is here twice. Um, this is used a lot with the rotating buddies. We see that Kylie is here on register and on set four. And that's what the two X means. Let's go to another one. Um, here we've got Layla on mobile drinks. Um, if I move Layla here, it'll move her. But if I grab Layla from over on the roster again on the right, I'm gonna go ahead and sort it by alphabetical so I can find it better. So I'm gonna find Layla. I can drag her into another position and now she's on there twice. So yes. And also Nathan, uh, the last webinar that we gave is, uh, is under our blogs. So if you go to the website, oneclickapp.com and go to the blogs, uh, uh, you'll actually see uh, a blog post that actually has a video attached to it that talks all about rotating buddies and all of this. I thought I saw another question. Nathan Wells was raising his hand. Nathan. Or maybe he just never unraised his hand. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that was the answer. Dang it. I thought he had another question. He added more detail to his question. He said that we have a catering preposition that would run in tandem to doing another position. So that's a really common use case. Um, oftentimes, like especially at closing. So let me show we have a customized closing setup. Um, so this is a this is a closing setup, um, and you you could really easily say, all right, Sam, you're going to be closing dining room, and we also need you to close uh, the cage. So if you could do both of those things for us, um, then you could obviously create more positions, put more things in. You can make a box for several things, um, and then put Sam. All right, dining. All right, Sam, you're in charge of dining room and cage. We need you both of those before you go home. Thank you very much. You rock. <laughs> Since I'm at it, um, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate this other feature. Um, some people, this is pretty cool. One click has break management built in. So all these, these red boxes here mean that these employees are working long enough to earn a break. Um, not everybody works long enough to earn a break. So Alexis from five to 8.30, three and a half hours, she doesn't earn a break, but the other people do. And so clicking on these will send them on break, on break 15 minutes. Um, and that timer will actually count down. Um, so it says 15 minutes right now, but it's gonna count down. Notice it's also counting down on the setup board. It's gonna count down 15, 14, 13, 12 until it's time for her to be back. And so you can send multiple people on break at the same time. But a little known feature, or at least not everybody realizes is here. If you click on one of these people who aren't on the setup screen, so there's this unassigned section and this assigned team member section, if you click on one of these people, instead of sending them on break, it's going to send them home. And so it'll cross them off, send them down to the bottom of the shifts, put, turn them gray and say, all right, either Emery didn't come on, didn't come to work today, or she left early or, um, or whatever, she was sent home, but she's not here. Uh, she called out sick, she has COVID. And so you can easily, really easily keep track of that information or say, for example, somebody on Saturday calls out sick, well, you can switch to Saturday and say, all right, Bryn called out sick, she's not going to be here today. So that's a cool feature. All right. <clears throat> well, Ryan, it's or Mike, it's been an hour. I think it's time to wrap up. I'm going to turn the time back over to you. Yes, thank you, everybody. We are we are excited to have you as customers, and we're excited to have you as potential customers, and we're we're here to help. If you have any questions, please. Uh, email support at oneclickapp.com and also sales at oneclickapp.com for those who are not customers yet so that we can answer all of the questions, any additional questions that you may have. And thank you for this and um, and until until next time. Okay, pause. Thank you, James. If Emma is still on the line, the answer is yes, we want to connect with Chick-fil-A corporate, but no, we don't have the connections. So if you have connections to corporate, please hook us up. <laughs> yes, great question. Oh, another question, Nathan. I just wanted to know if on the on the break thing that you were just showing, can it can it be customized? Because in California, we have no breaks which are thirty minutes long and rest breaks which are ten minutes long. All right, you asked the right question. Let me show you another. Um, all right, so we're gonna go to the beta version, and I'm gonna pause my screen share.
And I'm gonna switch to um, I'm gonna switch to the PCH in Maple Store. This is Trey, who I um, I actually went on site with him in El Segundo, which is by uh, Los Angeles. And he we used feedback from him to develop this. Um, there's a special sort available, this brake manager sort, and it's it just does all that. So yes, the brakes are very customizable. We have designed a set of brakes just for California based on the rules and the laws, and we can customize it if your store does it slightly differently. Um, but this is live, so you can see in their store, they, these are the brakes they need 10 and 30, 10 and 30 and 10, 10 and 30 and 10, this one only 10. Um, the blue ones are brakes that they've already run. So these people have already had two brakes and she needs one more. Um, and so, yes, it does that. That's awesome. So does it automatically know, like, if they need two 10s or one 10 and a 30? Like, does it, does it know yes. that based on time? <clears throat> yeah, so that's part of our advanced brakes uh, module. Um, and it's actually really advanced, but it will, oh, they just barely sent David on brakes. So that's real time live. They just barely did that. Um, it um, it takes based on all of their shifts. So however many shifts they're working in the day, it combines them together. And then based on the total length of their shifts, it calculates how many breaks they need. Um, and then of course there are rules that describe, okay, these laws and this amount of length and this amount of length and all the things, and it does that. Um, and there was another thing, I forgot what the other thing was. But yeah, basically. Oh, right. And anyway, it's really smart. And like if there are double shifts, so if somebody works two shifts, then it combines those together. Um, or if they work three shifts, it combines those together and runs it on the total of all their shifts. And so basically, it's going to do what it needs to do. There's a lot of words to, to, to use to say that. 